Brian. Where you been? I just come back from Sacramento. Spent two weeks with honorable cousin. <laughs> well, I think the Cartwrights would be here to meet you. <laughs> Hobson travel all alone. I go literally stable. I lend horse. I go back to Ponderosa. Well, they're going to be glad to see you. Two weeks of their own cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Hop Singh, what can I do for you? Mr. Jackson, you have a nice horse for a land for Hop Singh? Sure thing, this one's all ready to go. Cost you a dollar. You can bring the horse back whenever it's handy. He's a good horse. He no buck. Dan ain't bucked in 10 years. Very good. Hey, China boy. You ride a horse pretty good? Not very good, Mr. Younger. They're just so-so. Ooh, you know me. Oh, yes. Uh, I remember you. You come to Pandalosa one time with uh, uh, Mr. Davis. That's right, I did. Got shoved off the place. All set, Hopsing. Wait a minute, China boy. Answer me a question. Leave him alone, Amo. You stay out of this. You got in my way once before, and I had to move you. You don't want that to happen again. Now, I have heard that this pigtail gets a China boy into him. Let's go, Sonny. Let's go now. Hold on, China boy. You're the youngest, Tom. <laughs> what I was wondering no, was no. that pigtail will get you to him. Then why won't it get me to him? It's about the only way you'd get in, Amo. Look at that! No! He's just pretty! No! Boy on a horse, Joe! No, 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 no! We don't need him no more. He's a hoop! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! See about Hop Singh. He's supposed to come in on yesterday's stage from Sacramento and he ain't showed up. Well, Hop Singh came in yesterday morning on the 10 o'clock stage. You sure about that? Stood right here and talked to him. He was going down to the livery stable and get a horse and ride out to your place. Let's go out to the livery stable. Yeah. <clears throat> Thing. Well, didn't he get to the Ponderosa? Well, he was here then. Yeah, and he left at a dead gallop. I figured he'd head for home like a scalded cat. I've been waiting to see what you Cartwrights were going to do. What do you mean, Tom?
Emil Younger cut off Hopsink's pigtail. Oh, he did what? He cut off Hopsink's pigtail. I tried to stop him, but Younger and Davis, his partner, were together. So well, I got slapped sideways, is what it amounted to. And Emil just went ahead. He did right out, though, huh? Yeah, they put Hop Singh on a horse, booted the horse, and out he went. I figured he'd headed for home. But he didn't. He never showed up. You know what that's got to do to him? Yeah. At this time, he doesn't know where he's at. Tom, thanks. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Sure. Thanks, Tom. You realize what that pigtail meant to him? Yeah. Well, I reckon we ought to split up and go looking for him, don't you reckon? Yeah. Joe, don't you take that lake road and I'll take that beaver meadow trail. Candy, you stay on the main road and see if you can find any place he's pulled off. All right. Three hours and we'll meet at the old relay station. Yeah, good enough. told me you sold him Danny for a hundred dollars. Yep, I sold him. That buckskin was mine. I raised him from a coal. You didn't have no right to sell him, no right in the world. This ain't the best paint in the world, but I gotta do something to brighten this place, sir. He wasn't an ordinary horse. He was a cutting horse. There ain't a better cutting horse anywhere. We ain't in the business of raising pets. A man wants a horse, I'll sell him a horse. He wasn't for sale. He was my own personal property. Are you going to quit your whining, or am I going to have to take you outside and slap some sense into your head? You ain't got the guts to kill me. Now go on. Get out of here. Go. Belong to me. Mr. Younger, he take, he no give back. You want it back? Without hair, 
ancestor very unhappy with Hop Singh. Hop Singh cannot face Elder, lose faith. Hop Singh very shame. <laughs> Look, I'll make, I'll make you a deal. You get on your horse and, and ride over to the old relay station at Twin Forks and you wait for a horse and candy. I'll go on over to Younger's place and see if I can't get it back for you. How's that sound? That sounds very good. Excuse me, I... <laughs> for a good horse? I got horses will make your Ponderosa stock look like crow bait. You like my souvenir? I think it belongs to a friend of mine. You don't say. Yeah, I do say. I'm going to take it back to him. Don't you worry, I'm going to pay you for it. Hobbs told us what you were up to. If you hadn't come along when you did, we was going to come after you. I don't need any help with the likes of Younger. Oh. There you go. Thank you, little Joe. You're very good to Hobbs Singh. Forget it. Hobbs Singh, no forget. Someday, maybe, I help you. All right, you got a deal. Go on, get in the wagon. Look what you got in your hand. Paint. Younger was painting a table. Must have fallen against it. We had a little discussion before I left his place. Let's get out of here. Get up.
What do you want, Davis? Somebody went and killed Amo. Yeah, hit him on the head with a two-by-four. He's lying on the floor at our place now, dead. Two-by-four was fresh painted. Look, I don't want no trouble. I'm just gonna get the sheriff, that's all. Joe. Did you hit Younger with a two before? What do you think, I killed him? That ain't what I asked you. I hit him. I hit him with my fist, just my fist. All right. He was lying there when I left, but he was knocked out, that's all. White paint in his hair and hair all over this two before and handprints all over this. This has got to be what killed him. Look, I, I, I never touched that tube before. I got the paint on my hand on this table. Look, this table wasn't like this. It was lying on the floor and somebody's painted over it again. There was a handprint on this table. Unfortunate, little brother. It ain't there no more. Here comes Roy and Davis. What are you doing here? I figured you'd be running. Joe, is it like Davis here told me? Is Younger dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. Go ahead, take a look. Like I told you, there's a two before. See the hand marks on it? The white paint on Abel's hair? Yeah. Joe, you were here. Yeah, yeah, I was here. The younger cut off Hop Singh's pigtail. I came out to get it. We had a fight. He was lying on the floor when I left here, but he was knocked out, that's all. Did you knock him out with that two-by-four in there? No, I didn't touch the two-by-four. What about this white paint on your hand? Well, we were having the fight, I fell back against the table. The paint was wet. That's a lie. Sheriff, there ain't no marks. Look, I know there's no mark on it now, but there was before. Joe, I'm gonna ask you straight out. Did you kill Emil Younger? No, I did not. You were here? You had a reason to have a fight with him? You admit that you had one? That two by four in there undoubtedly killed him. And there was a hand mark on the two by four, and you have white paint on your hand. I don't have any choice but to take you into jail. Boss, if you and Davis here to load the body in the buckboard, I'd appreciate it. I'll be right on in the town. I'll get the lawyer and telegraph Paul. Hi, Ma. 
also the county prosecutor with a job to do. Let me help you by accepting a plea of second-degree murder. What? Well, I don't believe that the murder was premeditated. Uh, I think it was something that happened in the heat of a fight. Uh, a smaller man defending himself against a bigger man by whatever means was available. Look, Sam, I didn't kill Younger. I swear to you, I didn't kill him. A plea of guilty to second-degree murder would mean a sentence of ten years in prison. Thanks. A conviction of first-degree murder would mean death by hanging. No! Now, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna plead guilty to a murder that somebody else did. You have in mind who the somebody else might be? Why, what about Davis? Yeah, that thought occurred to the sheriff and me. Davis was with Mr. and Mrs. Whitby in the presence of their children when Younger was killed, beyond any shadow of a doubt. Sam, I did not kill Younger. I hope you'll get a good attorney to defend your brother. We got the best, Sam. We got Ed Gilder. You're gonna need everything he's got keep Joe from the gallows. Sheriff. Sit down, Candy. Have piece pie. Oh, yeah, piece of pie sounds good. I go get it. How did Hobson get his pigtail back on? Well, I decided to tie it together. We could grow another one. Ah, thank you, Hobson. Little Joe in jail? It's all my fault. Nothing Hobson can do to help. You want to help him, buddy? Tape him a couple of these pies. Grub in that jail is terrible. It's a good idea. I go right away. I cook now. Now that you had an opportunity to talk to Joe, what do you think? Well, I don't think your brother's chances look very good. But why? He didn't kill Younger. Are you sure of that? What do you mean? Haas, the evidence against Joe is pretty strong. Yeah, the motive, the opportunity, and the pain on his hand makes it look as though he handled a murder weapon. Yeah, but he didn't. He told me he didn't, and he don't lie. Oh, Haas, when a man's faced with the gallows, he'll lie himself blue in the face. I'm not saying Joe's a liar. Excuse, please, Mr. Haas, Mr. Giltner. I'm not saying Joe's a liar, but it'd be pretty hard to convince a jury that he's not. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'll salvage what I can. Now, you go on home. I'll see you later. If you need anything else, little Joe, you just holler. Good morning, Honorable Sheriff. Hello, Hopsang. What do you got there? It's a pie for, for little Joe. Oh. Hey, that smells good. You're going to have to leave it out here, though. The prosecutor gave me a list of the people that could see Mr. Joe, and uh, your name was not. Oh, uh, you give to little Joe, please. All right, fine. Maybe he'll give me a little piece, too. Oh, you got a nice table. No, oh, that's evidence. This is the club that killed Emil Younger, and I'm sorry to say that little Joe's hand mark is on it, too.
must see little Joe. Now, Hop Singh, I told you I couldn't let you see little Joe. Your name ain't on the list. It is very important. Doesn't make any difference. The answer is no. Now, I've got my orders and I'm giving you yours. You run along and take care of your business and I'll take care of mine. Uh, can I have paper, pencil, please? I think the county can afford that, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome for whatever you got. What do you suppose he's up to? I don't know. I ain't never seen him that excited before. <laughs> he's talking a lot of gibberish. I thought he was going to explode like one of his firecrackers. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. What? Little Joe Chop on Razor. What? Little Joe Chop on Razor. Wait, wait a minute. Chop on Razor? Is that what you're saying? Little Joe is innocent. Oh, Hop Singh, we know that. You can't prove. Well, no, we can't prove it. I wish we could. I prove. I prove. You can prove? How? Chop on stick kill younger is not little Joe Chop. Chop belong somebody else. What's this? Look. Yeah, Hop Singh, be careful with that thing. This is a little Joe laser. Nobody chops laser except little Joe. That's right. This is little Joe chop. Hop Singh, what are you talking about? What is a chop? You got chop, I got chop, he got chop. Everybody got chop, our chop is a different. Look, Hop Singh, just calm down. Now, I know you're all upset about losing your pigtail and little Joe being in jail and all, but this is no time to panic and lose our heads. Look. Look! That's my, that's my thumb mark. Is, is that a chop? That's a chop. Everybody got chop. All the same is a different. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He lost me again. Wait, 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 wait. What you're saying is that horse has a chop and I have a chop and you have a chop, but they're all different. That's right. And you can look at a chop and tell who made it? That's right, that's right. Oh, come on. You mind if I test you? Sure. All right. All right, all right. Come over here. Close your eyes. Close them. All right, I've seen. Come here. Now, there's two chops here. Which one's me and which one's horse? Where are you going? This chop, this chop, Mr. Horse chop, this chop, your chop. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> How'd you do that? I copy chop from Stick Kill Mr. Younger. Look, little toe chop on laser, two chop not the same. What do you think, Hoss? Hey, darn. Boy, they, they sure are different, ain't they? Seems that way to me. You know something? I think old Hobson may have something, Candy. With this information, we can prove that that chopper, that mark on that two before ain't Little Joe's. And therefore, we can prove his innocence, can't we? That's right, Hoss. That's what I say. Chop proof Little Joe is innocent. Little Joe help Hop Singh. Now Hop Singh help Little Joe. How'd you get to know all this stuff about chops? 
Chinese know about chop long, long time, thousand years. Everybody chop is a different. Sign paper with a chop, make pottery, put chop in a wet clay, then everybody know who make the pottery. A trademark. That's right. Yeah, or a signature. Everybody born with a chop. It's a his chop all his life. Never change. Chinese people is a very smart. Know this a long, long time. Yeah, but the trouble is nobody else knows it. How are we going to make them believe it? That's what we got a good lawyer for. Well, it's very interesting, but of no practical use to us whatsoever. Mr. Gilner. You mean, you mean we can't use it? No, we can't. I don't understand. Why? Well, no judge would accept it as evidence. But why not? Well, first, there's no scientific proof to substantiate your cook's claim that every man's thumb mark is different. Second, there's no legal precedent. And without precedent, it will not be given serious consideration. But, Mr. Gilner, the Chinese have been using this for over a thousand years. I mean, their thumbprints on their pottery, they use it like a trademark. Ain't that precedent enough? Not in this country, it isn't. Now, Haas, your brother's going to be faced with an American court, and there's no place there for Chinese superstition. We're going to face an American jury, and we've got to give them cold, hard facts. That ain't cold, hard facts enough. Not in this country, it's not. Well, it's the only choice we got. It's the only way we can save little Joe. Us, in my opinion, the only way we can save little Joe is by a plea of guilty to second-degree murder. Mr. Gilder, that's ten years in the penitentiary. Ten years? Or the gallows? It's your choice, Haas. Which is it going to be? I'm not going to plead guilty to something I didn't do. I know. I told you over that, and I told him I didn't blame you a whole lot. He says it's either that, take 10 years, or, or hang. Yeah, but it's not going to be either one. He ain't going to have nothing to do with hop sings, chops, or finger marks. He says if you don't plead guilty to the second degree charge, that, that he won't even take the case. Well, I would get another lawyer, then. That ain't gonna work either. I talked to Mr. William and Mr. Thomas both. They feel the same way about it Mr. Gilner does. Right then you handle it. Oh, you ain't serious. Oh, yes, I am. Joe, I, I don't know nothing about being a lawyer. It doesn't make any difference. I'd rather have you handle it and believe in me than have the best lawyer in town that thinks I'm guilty. Yeah. Oh, Joe, you'd be putting your money on a lame horse. It's my money. It's my neck, brother. Look, let me go back over and talk to Gilbert one more time. Maybe I can do something. Well, I'll see you later. Come in. Oh, hello, Haas. Howdy, Mr. Gorner. Sit down. Just over to jail talking to little Joe. Yeah? Well, you know how little Joe is. He's, well, he's sort of, well, he's hard hit. It's what he is. Yes, I know. Well, he's bound and determined that he ain't gonna plead guilty to something he didn't do, and I don't blame him a whole lot. So I came back to ask you one more time if, if you wouldn't plead his case out and, and do what you could with hop sings, thumb marks, or chops, or whatever he called them. No, Haas, I won't. Because it won't work. And that's my considered opinion as a pretty fair country lawyer. Yes, sir. Well, I had to ask anyhow, didn't I? 
I reckon under the circumstances, Mr. Gilner, that you can consider yourself relieved of any responsibility. I'll, I'll be doing his lawyer from here on out. Haas, you're not qualified. Yes, sir, I know. Look. As your brother's lawyer and as a friend of the family's, I'm going to insist that you let me plead this case. Mr. Gilner, I, I don't reckon insisting is going to do a lot of good unless you decide you want to play it our way. Thanks, anyhow. Hi. Right. Yes, sir. I uh, won't play it your way, but I will be at the defense table to offer a word of advice now. Thanks. You know, I got a, I got a funny notion that some of that advice I'm going to be needing a bunch of. Thanks. The case of the People versus Joseph Cartwright. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The record shows the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty to a charge of first-degree murder. I understand the defense would like to change that plea. No, sir. Your Honor, the defense will continue the plea of not guilty. Who are you, and what part are you going to play in this trial? Well, I'm, I'm Joe's brother, and I'll be acting in his defense if it's all right with you, sir. Oh, it's all right with me, and I presume it's all right with the defendant. Mr. Giltner, are you withdrawn from the case? No, Your Honor. I'm acting in an advisory capacity. It's all very irregular. However, Mr. Gort, would you please begin? I call Dr. Bliss. He was killed by a blow from a blunt instrument. Amo was dead on the floor, white paint on his hair, and... You see a club lying right beside him. No, sir, there wasn't any smear on the table. It was clean painted, just like it is here. Thank you, Sheriff. You may step down. Your Honor, the people rest. Cartwright, you may now begin. Your Honor, I'd like to get our cook up here, Hop Singh, if I could. Come on up, Hop Singh. Hop Singh, you understand the meaning of the oath? Yes, sir, Judge. Hop Singh is a very good Baptist. I promise to say the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God, I do. Now, Hop Singh, these little lines that all of us have on our thumbs and fingers, see them little lines? What do you call them, Hop Singh? It's called Finger Ridge. Finger Ridge, or a thumb ridge, right? Yes, sir. Now look here. If I was to pick up this tube before while the paint was still wet on it and leave a mark there where my thumb and fingers all touched it, what would you call that? It's called chop. Chop. Now, if you were to pick it up while it was still wet and you left a mark on it, would it be exactly like mine? No, Mr. Hoss. All chop is different. All chops are different. Your Honor, uh, uh, what's the point of all this? I was about to ask the same question. Well, Your Honor, if I can prove that everybody leaves a different mark when they touch something, what Hop Singh calls a chop, then I can prove that the mark or the chop on this two before was not made by my little brother. Therefore, he never touched the murder weapon, right? We can't accept this testimony. There's no proof that everybody leaves a different mark. There's no precedent. Your Honor, it's been explained to me that the Chinese have known about these marks for centuries. They've been used as signatures, as identifying marks on such objects as pottery. It's true. And I suggest that this is precedent enough. I object. Chinese beliefs, practices, superstitions, 
have no place in an American court of law. Let me remind you that a man is on trial here for his life. This court, and I trust the prosecution, will listen to any evidence that may have a bearing on the final verdict. Can you uh, prove this theory, Mr. Cartwright? Well, that's what I was aiming to do, Your Honor. Go right ahead. Uh, Candy, bring that package up here. Gentlemen, here is a clean piece of glass. It's been wiped off. There's not a mark on it. You'll notice your name's up there. I want you to take your right thumb and put your thumb mark right above each of your names. And Ed, I'll show you yours. Right there on the corner, Ed. Right there in the middle, Bill. There you are, Hoss. May I examine that, please? Yes, sir. Don't put any marks on it or smudge any of those that are already on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no intention of interfering with this demonstration of uh, oriental abracadabra. <laughs> now, uh, hop sing on the blindfold, you. If you'd like to examine this. No, that's perfectly all right. Now then, I'd like one of you fellows to put your right thumbprint on this. Your Honor, I object. No, that's all right, Mr. Gilder. That's all right. Let's see what Hop's saying to do with it. Now, Hop Singh, examine that thumbprint on that mirror. Tell me who it belongs to. This is going to make it tougher. Haven't you ever gambled? Not when there's a man's life at stake. Top on mirror is not belong to jury. Top on mirror is belong to Mr. Court. I protest. This is a trick. Mr. Cartwright signaled Hop Singh in some way. Well, my chop, my mark wasn't even on that pane of glass. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Gordon. You remember when you took the glass from me? I told you not to, but you did. You put a mark on it. Whether you know it or not, you put one on there. You ought to get yourself a good lawyer. Your Honor? Gentlemen of the jury, Mr. Gort had no more idea that he was putting an identifiable mark on that glass or that mirror when he did than the murderer of Emil Younger knew that he was putting an identifiable mark on this weapon. It's a weapon of murder. Now, Your Honor, all I have to do is prove to you and these men here in this jury that that mark on the murder weapon is not that of my little brothers. Joseph? Here, Joseph, put a thumbprint on there. Go ahead and put both of them on there. Mr. Hoss. Your Honor, I don't know how to go about this. I don't know what the rules and regulations are, but I'd like to have Mr. Jackson take the stand. 
I object. Mr. Gord, will you approach the bench? Jackson, step over here and be sworn. I'm saying go out there and take my chair with you. used to own that Younger Davis property, didn't you? And didn't Younger sort of beat you out of it? No, I never felt that. As a matter of fact, you've been holding a grudge against him ever since, hadn't you? No, I never held any grudge. Mr. Jackson, the other day when you told us, Joe and Candy and me, that Younger had cut off Hop Singh's big deal, didn't you know that was going to make trouble? I mean, big and bad trouble? I didn't think it would cause any real trouble. Didn't you go out there to make sure Younger got no, what was I coming to him? I didn't go out there. You waited until you saw little Joe come out, and then you went in. No, no, I never went in. Oh, you didn't go in. You found him unconscious, picked up this tube before, and you beat him no, to death No, I it, didn't. didn't you? Then you painted over Joe's handprints on the table. No, didn't no, you? I didn't. Hop Singh. Mr. Hoss. Will you stand and tell this court, this judge and jury, exactly what you told me a moment ago? Chop on club, same as chop of Mr. Jackson. No, 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 no. no. We'll hold Mr. Jackson until charges can be brought against him. Come on, Jackson. I declare this a mistrial. Defendant Joseph Cartwright is released on his own recognizance, pending a new hearing. This court is adjourned. <laughs> Brother. Congratulations. <laughs> Joe, I'm glad we got the right man. So am I. <laughs> that has been a memorable homecoming. What I'm particularly proud of is the way everybody handled himself, and especially you, Hop Singh. I just don't know how we can thank you. It's all the same, Mr. Carlyle. It's, it's not necessarily. Hey, here we go, Hop Singh. Take a look at that. We cooked them up special to show our appreciation. Oh. Here we okay. go. Thank you. Have a good look. Yeah. Grab a couple of these, yeah. huh? Dig right into that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's the matter? 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 I save your life. You try to kill me? Huh? Oh, that I am, Mobachi. You keep your chop off my chop. You punch a cow hop sink cook, all right? Huh? Oh. Oh.